the Quincy Dredge Number no. Two and Torch Lake. Kind of cool to do this one by boat, right, Poppins? Uh, yeah, I'm getting geared up. We're a little out of practice though, so bear with us. Lake Layman's actually been on the super fun cleanup list for decades. And the reason for Torch Lake being a super fun cleanup site is because of all that grass area over there is actually mine waste or what we call stamp sand. So if you look at the map of Torch Lake, you can see all of this is stamp sand. Down here it's all stamp sand. And then this big piece is stamp sand. Kind of looks like regular sand. But that's the result of uh, mining waste. But what we're gonna go find is an interesting invention used to take that stamp sand and find even more copper. So we're going to see Quincy Dredge number two. And you kind of might be wondering what happened to number one. Well, it's down under there somewhere in like a hundred feet of lake water. So that over there is a smelting plant. So this side, this part was used that housed the big machinery and the motors and the vacuum. It's basically a floating building, I guess. Oh, look at that. So this part up front is actually a vacuum head. And then it gets, the sand gets sucked into the pipe and then the water is expelled over the sides and then the sand was sent on a pipeline, I believe down that way to get processed. You can see where the operator set. It would suck up about 10,000 tons of sand per day. Poppins wants to get away from the leaning structure. I don't know why. So yeah, the Quincy Dredge number two. We're pursuing oddities of the Cubanaw Peninsula. And our next Saturday that we're gonna visit is actually where we plan to camp. It's a campground that is on an old mine. Nick started the Amit Copper Mine Campground late last year. There still seems to be a lot to do at the camp, but you can run a side-by-side -side and explore the peninsula. The old Amit Mine officially opened in 1903 and was a hub for transportation on the peninsula. It closed in 1966. You can explore the ruins of the camp and head to nearby Mohawk for some food and drink. It's centrally located to all the obscurities of the Keweenaw Peninsula. Next stop, self-guided mine tour. Exciting. It's one of the oldest copper mines in the Keweenaw. It held on for 40 years, but never made a profit for investors. We're doing a self-guided tour oh, now cool. of the Delaware mine. So uh, self-guided, which makes it pretty darn cool. So let's go down the 100 steps. This is the Vikings first authorized mine tour. So when miners come down to an area, they tend to drift off and look for copper in different areas. And this is a drift, it's about 200 feet that kind of goes to nowhere. There was no copper in there, so they stopped drifting in that direction and they went that away. One of Delaware's water-filled shafts reaches over a quarter of a mile into the earth. That's where we came from. And it doesn't take long when you drop down into the mine to uh, in the water, but some wreck divers went down in there and explored the mine even further. Dennis said nine levels are filled with water. This area is called a stoop. It's where they were mining along and they found a nice little vein of copper. And apparently this area had one and a half percent copper. And the tour turns spooky as we enter the area that's lit as it would have been in the 1870s. Then you come to the end of the line. 
So that was the Delaware Mind Bar. On to our next obscurity. Right, Poppins? I'm a little out of breath from walking upstairs again. So now we're headed to Gay, Michigan, where there's a famous bar, world famous bar, as well as the Gay Sands on the shore of Lake Superior, where stamp sand was dumped in the lake. Apparently it's an environmental hazard today, but it's also cool to drive on. Um, so let's go visit that. It's not every day you find a place that's nothing but pollution. It's a tourist attraction. We're at the Gay Sands. The Black Shore juts out in the Lake Superior on a scale that was a bit more unsettling than I expected. So yeah, a few miles of old stamp sand used for the copper mining. And you can come out here with the right vehicle and just kind of drive on it. And then there's beautiful Lake Superior, so it's kind of like an industrial beach. And I think the old stamp mill might be over there where the smokestack is. And then all this waste, as far as the eye can see that way, is all the waste from the stamp sands. The stamp mills operated until 1932 and dumped a combined 25 million tons of stamp sand in Lake Superior. The Black Beach has crawled south since then, swallowing everything in its path, including Buffalo Reef, a former spawning haven for lake trout and whitefish. Poppins is insisting on being a little more adventurous. I want to check out the uh, stamp mill right here. <laughs> Yeah, our old friend with the graffiti. Bet agree. Home of the singing sands, I guess. We're gonna try to get him to sing, but no guarantees we're gonna be successful. Local legend says that a Native American maiden lost her lover to the lake, and you can still help her call for him by making the sand sing. Definitely singing. The sand does seem to have a low bark if you stir it a bit. Adventure pants away! Happens adventure pants. They dry quickly. So I'm going to write a book about her sometimes. <laughs> Sweet Poppins and her adventure pants travels. So a trip out to the end of the Keweenaw Peninsula is kind of obscure. Uh, Poppins is being a good sport. She's getting tossed around. High Rock Bay is one of those places that's difficult enough to get to that most tourists stay away. I guess I should pop her in four wheel drive, that was kind of close. But it is unique enough that a casual adventurer has to journey to the tip of the Keweenaw for bragging rights and for the great view. Poppins and I reveled in our lunch and melted into the view. Nearby, a former NASA rocket test site still has some ruins and a plaque. It's not completely remote. Uh, there's a lot of people here, but it's better than a state park campground, isn't it, Poppins? Um, yes, except for the bugs, but I'll get over it. Where the bears pride in the cow town, you can hear the osprey scream. Nine, we were cutting pine and sending it down the stream. I found a green one over there. Here we are launching the boat, going to Copper Harbor Lighthouse. And he's off to park. I'm holding the boat with my foot. Let's hope there isn't a precarious situation. <laughs> The uh, bug nets have a nice feature with a big zipper right here at the neck. There's a mosquito now. They're my evil villains. So one of the unique uh, oddities that you can visit is the Copper Harbor Lighthouse. But apparently you can't drive there because the road is closed to the public. But out of this harbor, this marina, it's the Copper Harbor State Marina, get on a launch and take a tour 
of the Copper Harbor Lighthouse, which is right over there. It's about a 15 minute ride. And there's fewer bugs out on the water, thank God. <laughs> she doesn't like bugs. It's kind of sweet, like a French pastry. So I do believe this is the dock where the launch comes, and uh, we gotta find a spot that's not that dock. So hopefully you can see the map, but we're over here at the lighthouse, and you can see all the hazards where some of the lava eroded, the lava tubes eroded, but you come in right here, it's a couple range lights. So the area was uh, first discovered by Douglas Houghton. He brought a party up here, an expedition party, and uh, they explored the area and they found copper, lots of copper. And uh, he died just down the way at uh, Eagle River, boat capsized in a gale. So over here is Fort Wilkins, and that is the law and order of the area. Back in the mid 1800s when all the mining took place, there weren't any roads or railroads built up here yet. And so shipping was the only way for them to traverse this area and bug net back on. <laughs> Since we took our own boat, it was quiet with that slow, windy peace you get on a Great Lake shore. But since the tour launch hadn't arrived, the buildings were locked. All right, so let's head back. Um, that was uh, the uh, Copper Harbor Lighthouse. Not easy to get to. Pretty cool though. So here's the buoy that we uh, heard from uh, the lighthouse. I still get excited about maritime stuff I've seen a hundred times. I'm kind of a dork like that. Up next is the Devil's Wash Tub along the shores of Lake Superior. So let's go check it out. Some call it the sloshing whatnot. It's a blowhole that's endlessly exciting during rough seas and a sloshing not much during calm weather. Where are we at, Poppins? We're at the Devil's Wash Tub. Did you bring me here to do laundry? Oh gosh. Cold Lake Superior water kept us from swimming in it today, but Ingrid stopped by. She goes to college nearby and was showing her family the sights. So who's Ingrid? Are you Ingrid? So Ingrid here has jumped in the lake and swam in to the wash tub. You must go to, uh, do you go to school up here? Live up here? Yeah. Are they come, did they come up to visit? And you're showing them all the things you shouldn't do that you've been doing? I think we're gonna stop at the jam pot, uh, mostly because Poppins wants to stop. I've actually never been there, but uh, it's not really the style of the channel to go check out places like the jam pot because everybody goes there, but you know what? We're gonna go there too, and then we're gonna do one of those YouTuber sampler food things in our vehicle after we get something there. And we're gonna talk about how lovely it is and kind of analyze it. So. Uh, so apparently there is no line at the jam pot. I guess there usually is, but it's uh, 20 minutes before the open and we're here. So uh, here we are. In 1983, a couple lay Catholics living in Detroit explored the UP and found a small rundown resort. They bought it and developed the Holy Transfiguration Skeet, a Byzantine Catholic monastery. They have supported the monastery selling jams and baked goods at the jam pot. And they weren't even priests when they came up here, but there was a vision. And uh, okay. they came up here and land was cheap and it, it was remote. Yeah. And you know, most monasteries in the world are kind of in remote places, mm -hmm. you know. So they came up here basically nothing. We got our vittles from the jam pot, but that's not the obscure, unique part. We're going to do that a little later. So what did you get, Poppins? We have a nut mix, caramel cashew for me. <clears throat> and then for my favorite father, Gooseberry jam. May the skin of the gooseberry always cover, cover the eyes it. of your enemy. Yep. So we're gonna head out and we're gonna come back tonight for some fun. One of the founders, Father Basil, passed away last November. Three monks are left, and since their church belongs to the Ukrainian metropolis, they are actively seeking monks from Ukraine. We attended their evening prayer. So if you get a chance, stop by for one of their public services. It's an enlightening treat. <laughs> 